All right, Alexander, let's uh, talk about the, well, let's revisit the G7 summit for, for a bit, because uh, I think we, we are starting to understand what happened between Lula and Zelensky and what Modi told the collective West, including Zelensky, when he was uh, in Japan. And it looks like the, the diplomatic push that we've been seeing from the collective West to try and win India and Brazil over is now conclusively failed. It's not going to happen. It, 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 it backfired disastrously. And it, it was perhaps reckless of the West ever to think it would succeed. But clearly they did think it would succeed. It, it shows you again how um, inadequate, frankly, <laughs> the conduct of Western foreign policy has become. They, they didn't really understand how strongly the Indians and the Brazilians felt about their position. But the really key things that have happened is we've now had the Indian foreign ministry has provided readouts of um, Prime Minister Modi's comments. Now, the first is if he's meeting with Zelensky himself, and the second is if he's addressed to the G7 leaders, in other words, to the leaders of the collective West. But it's perhaps the meeting with Zelensky that is the more interesting one, because Zelensky seems to have gone to speak to Modi with some way intention of either shaming Modi to change his position or persuading Modi to change his position. And what he got instead from Modi was a lecture. And Modi said to him, look, I'm not interested in the politics of this, about what's going on in Ukraine, between you and the Russians. I'm not going to impose sanctions on the Russians. I'm not going to discuss the geopolitical issues or aspects of this. As far as I'm concerned, this is only a humanitarian crisis in Ukraine. I'm only interested in that aspect. The way you solve that is not by continuing this war, it is by sitting down and negotiating with the Russians. If you want my help to do that, I will provide it. But don't waste my time by talking to me about sanctions and such things. So it was absolutely not the message that Zelensky was looking for. I think Zelensky came away from that meeting absolutely furious, probably very, very upset indeed. And I think we now have the, re the explanation of why he didn't turn up and meet Lula, because he just got that from one BRICS leader, who was Modi, who talked to him in this extraordinary way. And then he didn't want to hear essentially the same message from Lula. And so he made his excuses and didn't turn up. Now, we've also had, I've, I've actually had spoken to, well, I've had a, a member of the Duran community who speaks Portuguese, has spoken to me about uh, Lula's comments. And it turns out that he was absolutely furious. And what he actually said was about Zelensky not turning up. He said, I am not disappointed. I am angry. <laughs> In other words, he was angry with Zelensky for not turning up. So he made his feelings absolutely clear about that. Then Lula took his plane from Hiroshima, returned to Japan and then got on the telephone. And whom did he call? He called no less a person than Vladimir Putin. And um, the very first words of the Russian readout of the call are the president of Brazil shared his impressions of participating in the recent G7 summit in Hiroshima. So in other words, what the Russians are implying, and I don't think we have any reason to doubt this, what the Russians are implying is that Lula gave Putin a complete report on everything that he saw in Hiroshima. His interactions with uh, the Western powers, Zelensky's behaviour, his own feelings about all of that. And in effect, it's as if Lula was reporting to Putin about what took place there, which won't have pleased the collective West at all. You shouldn't have invited Alensky to the G7 to begin with. No. They have this weird idea that Alensky's charming. 
which is very strange. <laughs> not, not many people would call uh, Zelensky charming, but for some reason, the globalist elites, they think that, that he can charm all of these leaders to, to, to side with, with him in the collective West. But instead of charming, he's the exact opposite. He's very off-putting. He's, he's a very unlikable person. Exactly. That's, that's, that's the vibe that I get. Exactly. By the way, um, Modi also came out of his meeting with Zelensky very angry because he then addressed the G7 as well. And he said essentially the same things that he said to Zelensky. He also said, look, this is not for me a political or economic issue. It is a humanitarian one. In other words, don't bother me with sanctions. Don't um, ask me to take sides. I'm not going to do that. Don't ask me to compromise our relations with the Russians. I'm not going to do that. And then he absolutely ripped into them. He said, why are we here talking about these issues? Surely the place to talk about them, to go to talk about them, is the United Nations. And why aren't we properly represented at the United Nations? <laughs> In other words, why hasn't India got a permanent seat at the Security Council. So, I mean, he came out of this very angry. And again, it's exactly what you said. Zelensky just rubs people up the wrong way. It is as simple and as straightforward as that. Yeah, so now that uh, the, the United States, well, you would imagine that the United States now realizes that uh, they're not going to win India over and they're not going to win Brazil over, are they now going to change uh, tactics? Is it now going to be no more carrots and all stick? Not that they were giving India or, or Brazil any types of like real incentives to um, decide with them, but are they now going to start along the path of demonization, regime change, uh, sanctions? I don't know. They're going to start taking out all of their, their pressure tools and to start to, to work on India and Brazil to to punish them into um, ditching Russia. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's exactly what they're going to do. We got a foretaste of this, by the way, because um, already there's been lots of criticism of both uh, Modi and uh, Lula. But we also saw the, the way in which Biden interacted with Erdogan after Erdogan's, Erdogan's election. So on election day, Erdogan has just won his election, tough election, heavy fight, he must be exhausted, he must be elated, he gets what's supposed to be a congratulatory call from Biden, and what just happens is that Biden tries to bully him. He says, you know, you're a NATO ally, we're going to have this meeting in Vilnius, you must basically go along with what we want about Swedish membership, about Russia, about Ukraine, about all of those other things. And I get the sense, again, that Erdogan was absolutely furious, <laughs> because you get the Turkish readout, which is incredibly short and doesn't even mention NATO at all or any of the things that we know that Biden brought up. So, uh, but that's, that's the style. So Zelensky isn't very likable. Biden isn't very likable. When they try persuasion with Zelensky, it backfires. So now they wheel out Biden and he tries to bully. And of course that backfires too. And I would add that they're going to go beyond that now. They've already tried that with Turkey. They've tried to put pressure on the lira and that kind of thing. And we're going to start to see the screws turned on India and Brazil as well. Yeah, that would explain why we're getting uh, BRICS nations talking about creating some sort of uh, sanctions-proof currency. I mean, like creating yeah. a currency or creating a mechanism, I won't even say currency, a mechanism, so that when the sanctions do come against all of the BRICS members, they're, uh, they're sanction-proof. Exactly. So, of course, what it is achieving, all this campaign of pressure, is achieving the exact opposite. It's, uh, it's, um, it's causing them to put aside whatever differences they still have, and China and India have serious differences, uh, and actually cut club together and act to protect themselves from the United States. I mean, it's disastrous foreign policy. It, 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 is, it is ludicrous to conduct foreign policy in this way. But that's what they do. All right, we'll uh, leave it there. The Duran.locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram, and Rockfin. Go to the Duran shop. 10% off. Use the code. Good day. Take care.